Hey guys, Jeremy Lord here and welcome to another illustration video. In today's episode, we're going to be going through Adobe Photoshop and looking at a bunch of different ways to create some easy shading. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're in Photoshop and um, I thought today I would use um, this little illustration that I did a little while ago of a kind of a adaptation of um, Arale into a little bit of a demon. Uh, and what we've got is a, a bit of an illustration that's lacking any shading. So we've got some highlights here that I might just turn off um, for now. And we've got a few different colors. It's a relatively simple illustration. Um, but as you can see, we're, we're lacking a little bit of volume. There's a, a little bit of depth missing. Um, and that's the main thing with shading is obviously shading is there to give you a sense of kind of the lighting source and, and what maybe kind of time of day it is if it's warm or, or cold or any of those kind of things. But the really the main um, property of shading is to create volume. Anything without shading tends to look a little bit more flat um, and lacking that kind of depth and volume and clarity in the image. Um, so we really want to kind of create that um, that shading in there. So one of the ways that people do this, um, which I'll kind of jump into real quick, is when you're doing digitally, it can be very easy or, or simple or tempting to just go in and create a black um, layer and just start painting with some black on here. Um, and then you could, if you wanted to, kind of drop that opacity down to um, something like this, which is all good. Um, one of the issues with doing that, I find, um, is obviously if you're over here, like you're creating some shading on the arm there, um, that's all good. But if you go over, it's going to go onto the background here, and that's no bueno. So what you really want is to kind of create shading in a nice, easy, kind of simple way that's going to allow you to work a little bit faster and a little bit more um, productively in that sense. So one of the ways that we're going to do that, the way that I like to, to kind of work, is as you can see, I've got my outlines here. So all of my outlines are sitting on the same layer. And then in here, I've got all my colors. So I just use this code like OTL for outlines and colors for colors. Um, and then I've kind of named my layers, which you know is always a really good idea, but not necessarily something that I would do on the fly as I'm painting. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create um, another layer from this. So with the, all of these colors here in a group, I'm going to hit um, Command J, and that's going to duplicate my layer here. And then I'm going to hit Command E. Um, that's Control instead of Command if you're on a PC, by the way. And what I've done is I've just taken all of my colors here and smashed them all into just one single layer. Now I'm going to lock this layer because I want to fill this with uh, a black. And I can do that by just tickling that checker box up there. It looks kind of like a chess piece kind of thing. Um, or I can just hit forward slash on my keyboard uh, and that's going to do that for me. And then with my um, control, sorry, uh, option delete key, I can actually fill that real quick. So I've done basically the same thing um, as I did before, but you can see that there's nothing that's kind of sticking out from what I had originally done. There's no, there's not going to be any shading that's going to happen here because there's no pixel information here because all I've done is taken all the information from my layers here to create that shading if you want. Um, so it's a really kind of clean and easy way to basically do the same thing. Now, as you guys saw, I filled this with black. Um, just a little bit of kind of color theory here. It's really a good idea to use black as a form of shading. Um, black is n almost never a, a real color in the real world. So what I tend to do here is I'll actually probably go for something a little bit lighter. Uh, and if I play with my hue sat, I can kind of create uh, maybe like a really dark blue or dark purple, depending on, again, if I'm trying to get cool or, or warm lighting and shading in there. Um, I'll kind of play around with that. And that's going to give me something a lot more realistic when I um, drop that back. Instead of that black, and I'll show you guys by comparison how that looks um, with the black. Um, so that's the kind of darkish purpley blue, and this is the black. It just gives it a lot more kind of, a lot less vibrancy. It just looks a little bit kind of flatter, whereas this has just a, that little bit of extra warmth in it. So a little bit of a kind of a secret for you guys is almost 
never ever use black as as a form of shading um, white on the flip side can be used as a form of lighting depending on reflections and so on but again I tend to try and avoid that as much as possible um, so what I can do now one of the ways that I can kind of work here is all I need to do is put a layer mask on that particular layer um, and then I can fill that with my black again so it's all being hidden and then I just come in with my um, brush with white and paint that stuff back in. The nice thing is if I'm painting over here, as you guys can see, that's not actually painting anywhere um, because there's no color there to be unmasked. So it just gives me a really good, clean and easy way to work in some shading without having to worry too much about kind of really sticking to the actual line work that I've created in the beginning. Um, and it just means that everything becomes a little bit faster and a little bit easier to to handle. Now obviously when you guys are doing this you want to select um, a, a particular direction of lighting um, that's going to be key when you're doing this so I'm going to choose a light source that's coming basically from like over here um, just a real simple one. If you're doing this I'll do a tutorial on how to kind of think about shading and where the sort of shading goes in a, in a bit more clarity um, but for now I just wanted to kind of show you guys these two different ways of creating this shading um, and again yeah you just you just keep kind of keep painting this in um, and obviously you need to be a little bit careful when you're trying to do stuff in the middle here but it's really nice to just be able to come in um, even with my selection tool I can sorry let's switch that to the lasso tool I can literally just make these big selections and I don't need to be concerned about what's going on out here I can just hit my fill button and that's going to fill that nice and clean without going outside. So it's just a really kind of nice, easy, non-destructive way to create some shading in here. And again, if I've screwed up like I've just done right here, uh, just hit X on your keyboard, switches between black and white, and I can bring some lighting back in here. And it's, again, just really kind of nice way of working. Um, I'm using, by the way, if you guys are wondering, the brush that I'm using is Carl T. Webster's Manga Smoothie, which is this one. Um, I really, really like working with that one. It just kind of gives me those really smooth lines. I boost the smoothing up to about 50. And as you guys might have seen, I turn um, build up off because it, it does kind of funny things if you leave smoothing and build up on at the same time. You'll get some weird results on the um, start of that line. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it. So I might just um, speed up a little bit here and kind of finish all this off and give you guys a sense of how this all looks when it's done. So um, we'll, um, we'll speed it up from here on in. All right, so as you can see, um, that was pretty quick. This is a pretty basic, simple illustration. Um, what I have done is just added some shading to it as, as you guys were um, watching this. But the difference here is obviously this is a little bit flatter. It's kind of hard to differentiate the arm from the ear. So it kind of, you know, what's in front, what's behind is a little bit harder to, to decipher. As soon as you add that shading in, everything's, everything becomes 3D. Everything's got a little bit more volume to it. Um, so it's really something that's super important to, to try and work with. Another quick way that you could do this, um, again, very um, different way of doing it, but exactly the same thing, is I'll, I'll re just reuse this layer mask here. Is I'm going to put an adjustment layer on my uh, group here, and I'm going to put a hue sat adjustment layer. Uh, an adjustment layer is a really nice way to work non-destructively with this kind of shading. And what it will allow me to do is, you can see if I drop the lightness here, it's dropping the lightness on that. But it's also affecting the circles behind the, um, the actual illustration. So I don't want that. So what I need to do 
is just tick on this little icon here and that's going to mean that it's only going to affect the layer immediately underneath my adjustment layer and not the ones beneath that. Um, so I can just drop that darkness. I'm going to hit colorize here so I'm going to get a nice uniform um, light and I'm going to go back into my kind of darkish purpley color. Um, and what I can do is I can literally just drag that layer mask onto that. Yep, replace that. And it's it's basically done exactly the same thing. So different kind of way of working. It's entirely up to you. Now I'm on my mask. I can do exactly the same thing. So you guys can see if I paint with black, it's going to hide it out. If I paint with white, it's going to come back in. Um, and again, same thing. You don't need to worry about what's going to happen over here because it's only impacting these colors. And because these colors don't have anything in this section here, it's not actually going to do anything. So um, as always with Photoshop, more than one way to do the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. But I think always the, the thing to remember here is try and avoid, if you can, just going with black um, and work in a way that's going to allow you to kind of have that mask so you don't have to be too careful about going off on the sides here. So um, yeah, that's it for today's tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys around. That's it for this week's episode, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, a like or a subscribe would be super appreciated. Um, in the meantime, take care, and we'll see you guys next week for another illustration video. See ya.